allergies. No matter who or where you are, you can be allergic to something. Cats make you sneeze, pollen makes your eyes water, or in more severe cases, bees can kill you. But why do we get allergies? And does it seem that some allergies are more common or even severe than they used to be? And how are new medical discoveries promising some relief? In this video, we're itching to talk to you about a plague that affects so many of us. So grab a tissue, pour some calamine lotion, and join us as we take a deep dive into allergies. Mother Nature's Bane. Plague of the devil, and he shall appear. <sighs> It's time to think bigger. Your immune system exists to fight off invaders, like viruses or bacteria. But allergies happen when your immune system reacts to something harmless with the same weapons it uses against illness or infection. <laughs> this over-the-top reaction shows up as symptoms like itching, sneezing, or worse. Allergies are triggered by foods like peanuts or shellfish, environmental factors like mold, dust, or grass, or animal dander, bites, or stings. So what's going on behind the scenes? To put it simply, warfare at a microscopic level. Okay, but to put it more scientifically, when your body comes across an allergen for the first time, sometimes it will react to it. That reaction starts when helper T cells misidentify something harmless like pollen as a dangerous invader. Your immune system then produces special proteins called IgE antibodies. These antibodies attach to mast cells, immune cells found in your skin, airways, and digestive tract. The next time you're exposed to that same allergen, the IgE antibodies recognize it and alert the mast cells, which then release chemicals like histamine, which is what causes allergy symptoms like sneezing, itching, or swelling. Mild allergic reactions can be annoying, but there's also a severe form called anaphylaxis. It causes a flood of immune chemicals to surge through your body, putting it into shock. Your airways tighten, making it hard, if not impossible, to breathe. At the same time, your blood vessels suddenly widen, causing your blood pressure to plummet. It's like your body pulls the fire alarm and shuts down the building at the same time. That one-two punch makes anaphylaxis life-threatening. This simple misreading of a peanut can kill. And to make it worse, it's your own body doing it to you. Stop calling you? me, you Listen sick! Listen to me. We traced the call. It's coming from inside the house. You hear me? It's coming from inside the house. In most cases, allergic reactions can be itchy or annoying. But in some, they can be very, very serious. And they've been fighting this war on humanity for a very long time. <clears throat> so, how long have people been plagued by allergies? The causes of allergic reactions were first identified in the 1800s, but that doesn't mean they're modern. Symptoms were described in documents going back to ancient Greek, Chinese, Egyptian, and other cultures. In the first century CE, a Roman philosopher named Lucretius observed that what is food to one man is bitter poison to others. It's hard to confirm historic deaths by allergies, since so many medical advances were yet to come and people were busy blaming sickness on you know, stuff like eclipses and witchcraft. We have found the witch! May we burn, huh? Burn! There are theories that Pharaoh Menes died about 5,000 years ago when he was stung by a hornet or a wasp. But others say it was a hippopotamus. Which is very different. Some claim John Lackland, an English king in the 1200s, died from a peach allergy. Though other sources suggest it was dysentery. Again, very different. In fact, it wasn't until the 1900s that we even had a name for allergies. An Austrian pediatrician, Clemens von Burkay, was giving a smallpox vaccine made of horse serum to patients when he noticed some were reacting strongly when they got a second dose. He called it serum sickness, and he figured out that his patients' immune systems were producing antibodies to fight foreign substances contained in the serum. A year later, he named the interaction allergy, after the Greek words for other and work. While we understand much more about the cause and effect of allergies, tragedies still happen. More recently, you may remember a wrongful death lawsuit against, let's just say, a famous company. The company's representatives suggested the lawsuit couldn't proceed because the victim's husband has agreed to terms on the uh, famous company's streaming channel. According to the lawsuit, the victim died of an anaphylactic reaction 
after consuming dairy and nuts at the company-owned restaurant after staff told her the food was allergen-free. This is an extreme and tragic case, but there's no question that allergies can have a big effect on business. One U.S. study found that there are 4 million missed or low productivity workdays each year just due to hay fever. In Japan, one company sends employees to an island retreat during allergy season, betting the cost balances out the loss in productivity due to the allergy symptoms. But if we tried to send everyone who suffers from allergy to an island retreat, well, we're gonna need a bigger boat. So what are the numbers? Well, almost one third of adults and a quarter of children have allergies. Nearly 11% of adults, or 27 million people, have at least one food allergy. And 8% of children under the age of five have some type of food allergy, most commonly eggs, milk, or peanuts. But there are some really unusual allergies out there too. Some people, for instance, are allergic to cold, the sun, water, human touch, or even exercise. So why do some of us have reactions while others blithely run through fields of flowers? Well, like a lot of other things in life, it's probably your parents' fault. Daughter, more like sister. <laughs> you. Like your hair and eye color, genetics plays a big part in who gets allergies. So our allergies and our reactions to them can be just as varied as everything else about us. And here's something interesting. Does it seem as if allergies are becoming more and more common? Well, you're not imagining it. And there are theories as to why. The hygiene hypothesis suggests that because we live in increasingly sterile surroundings, washing our hands and using antiseptic cleaners, our immune systems are not as exposed to germs as they were in the past. Because of these changes, our bodies don't correctly learn the difference between harmless and dangerous substances. Now shut up and eat your garbage. During the same time period, we've seen other rapid changes in how humans live. Some of these changes are possible suspects as well. For example, the rise in antibiotics use, particularly in children. Early antibiotics exposure changes the bacteria in our digestive system, also known as our gut flora or microbiome. Hey, uh, Vince here in the edit. I'm worried that that last sentence sounded anti-antibiotics. Uh, just to be clear, we're not anti-antibiotics. They're amazing. Take them when your doctor tells you to. Okay, cool. All right, let's get back to other possible causes. Other possibilities, acetaminophen use, vitamin D deficiencies, and obesity, which contribute to many chronic conditions. Given how diverse allergies are and how diverse our responses can be, there are an equally diverse number of ways to combat them. Of course, avoidance is a big one, which is why many schools ban peanuts and peanut butter and why packaged foods have allergen warnings and why people with seasonal allergies are advised to shower when coming in from outside. I recall Central Park in fall. But for many, avoidance is not good enough. So we've seen multiple generations of drugs to fight environmental allergens. Drugs? The first generation, which most famously includes Benadryl, more easily crosses the blood-brain barrier into our nervous system which is what makes us so tired. A convenient effect at night, but less so when you have to go to work. The second generation, including loratadine, was a big breakthrough because unlike the first, these medications don't cause drowsiness. Immunotherapy is another approach. Allergy sufferers can follow multi-year protocols of regular allergy shots that act similar to vaccines, offering small doses of the allergen to create a natural immunity. But these shot protocols take time sometimes months or years to be effective, costing a lot of school and work hours. And it's not like getting a bunch of shots is anyone's idea of a good time. Shall we begin? <laughs> Sublingual or under the tongue drops are similar and can be taken at home, but they're not FDA approved and in many cases aren't covered by insurance, making them too expensive for many. Luckily, the medical advances keep on coming. For food allergies, omalizumab, originally approved as asthma drug in 2003, was found to reduce the risk of allergic reactions to peanuts and other foods. And the FDA approved that for use in 2024. Genome engineering, particularly CRISPR editing, offers potential to effectively delete the allergen genes at the source. Here's the thing. 
Mother Nature may have started this fight, but she doesn't get the last word. Every year, researchers get closer to understanding, even reversing the allergic response. And every new breakthrough gives us more ways to fight back. While allergies can be frustrating or even dangerous, knowledge is power. And the more we learn, the better we breathe. Someday, we'll vanquish the mighty peanut. So what about you? Hit us up in the comments and let us know how you deal with allergies. And give us a like and subscribe to find out what we'll be discovering next. Right nose, wheezing, coughing, itchy, watery eyes, headache, dizziness, confusion, rash, swelling, shortness of breath, cramps, vomiting, diarrhea. And then we're skipping this part. Okay. Go ahead and hit play, Ryan. Oh, we're not connected. <laughs> Cut.